it may sound great, but it just simply is not true. Their only hope was in repentance and turning to God and asking God's forgiveness for their evil. But you see, this gave them a way out without repentance. You can continue in your sin and you're going to be all right. You can continue in these practices and things are going to turn out okay. That's not so. That's a lie. And the lie caused them to turn from the very and the only thing that would save them. And they were trusting in a lie because the false prophet was there speaking in the name of the Lord. The false prophets today are causing people to have false hopes. They create the idea that God can be manipulated by man, that you can write your own ticket and create your own reality through faith. But when the dreams do not become reality, many people then blame God for their continued financial problems that have only been uh, worsened by the fact that they now have to pay off the loan to the bank that they made to send to that false prophet. As a shepherd, I'm concerned for the flock of God. God has commanded me to feed his sheep, not to fleece his sheep. But I think it's important that we warn you that there are wolves out there who are disguised as shepherds, but their only desire is to fleece the flock of God. Their bottom line is always to send support to their ministry. But how sad it is when people will trust in their lives. God says one thing. The false prophet says another. God said to Adam, if you eat of that tree, you will surely die. Satan said, you will not die. Now, who do you believe? Do you believe God or do you believe Satan? God's word said to Adam, you'll die. Satan said, you won't die. Adam made a very foolish mistake. He believed Satan. And he died when he ate of the tree. Jeremiah was saying, Babylon is going to capture and destroy the city and bring you under their yoke. Hananiah was saying, God has broken the yoke of Babylon. And within two years, the captives will be set free. Who are you going to believe? So the people were believing Hananiah because he was saying the things they wanted to believe. Lies are oftentimes much more appealing than the truth. Look how Satan is capturing the people of the world through lies. The Bible says there is only one God. One mediator between God and man, and that's the man Christ Jesus. The false prophets are saying, why well, all roads lead to God. Jesus is just one of the many ways by which people are coming to God today. That all religions have their value and have their good. And that to say that Jesus is the only way is just too narrow. And it's too limiting. And thus you have God's Word saying one thing. You have these false prophets saying another thing. Who are you going to believe? The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. The false prophets say, well, God is too good to punish anyone. Who are you going to believe? The Bible says that God will supply all of your needs in all of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus our Lord. The false prophet says you've got to supply all of God's needs by sending to his ministry. Who are you going to believe? 
Do you believe in a God that supports you or believe in a God that you've got to support? Jeremiah came to the prophet Hananiah and he said, The Lord did not send you. You're not of God. I've written many letters to many of these evangelists who send out their appeals. And I told them the same thing as Jeremiah said. That the Lord did not tell you to say that. You know, they, they will send their letters that are addressed uh, to dear Charles. You know, well, nobody calls me Charles. But that's their computer. This morning as my wife and I were in prayer, the Lord laid you on our heart. And we had such a burden for you. We just couldn't get it, couldn't get free of it. We prayed and prayed, but yet somehow the Lord didn't share exactly what your need is. Write, Charles, and tell us what your need is. How we wish we could be there with you in your room, you know, there in the print your address and so forth, and, and just pray with you personally. But if you will write to us, we'll be glad to pray for you, you know, and... and, and Help us to understand what this great burden is that God put on us. We can't sleep because we're so concerned about you. And, and incidentally, when you write, could you enclose an offering for our ministry? We're going through such desperate times right now. Uh, maybe you could go out and borrow the money. And, and I get these letters and I write back and I say, the Lord didn't lay me on your heart. You weren't praying for me. You're a liar. And God didn't send you with this message. And I, I'm i like Jeremiah. I, I'll, I'll write them. I gets me off their list. But Jeremiah said, the Lord didn't send you with this message. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will cast you from off the face of the earth, and this year you will die, because you have taught rebellion against the Lord. Find out who the true and the false prophet is. You say within two years the yoke of Babylon will be broken. I say within a year you'll be dead. Now we'll find out the true and the false prophet. You know, back when they were having the Olympics here in the Los Angeles uh, area, few years ago, there was uh, some fellow who had come with these dire predictions that during the Olympics there was going to be a major earthquake that uh, was going to shake Southern California, and he had had all of these visions of earthquakes and predictions of earthquakes before, and, 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 and a lot of people were upset. Some people even moved out of the state. And if you'll remember at that time when people were saying, did you hear about these predictions and so forth? And it was so widespread that I felt that it was important that uh, I address it from the pulpit. And so if you'll remember, I said, uh, I predict there won't be a great earthquake during the Olympics here in Southern California. I said, when the Olympics are over, we'll find out who the true prophet is and who the false prophet is. Well, here Jeremiah sort of laid it on the line. Within a year, you'll be dead. Because you're not really sent by God. You are a false prophet. And the result of your prophecy is that you've caused the people to rebel against the, lo the, the, the word of the Lord. They're, they're trusting in a lie. They don't think that they have to repent. They think that they can just go ahead and continue in their sinful practices. They're going to get by with it. And if you think that you can continue in sin and get by with it, you're being deceived. If you're resting in some kind of a hope or, 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 or the word of somebody that, you know, well, God is so loving, He'll never punish evil. You're, you're, you're being deceived and you're trusting in a lie. If you think that you can get by in sin without paying the consequences, 
You're being deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that he is going to reap. And so Jeremiah said, within the year, you'll be dead. And we read, and in the seventh month of that year, Hananiah died. We found out who the true prophet was and the false prophet. And Jerusalem was destroyed by the Babylonians and they carried away the rest of the artifacts from the temple to Babylon, the two pillars, the brass pillars, the whole thing. It was devastating. But the tragedy was that when the people should be repenting and turning to God and seeking God, they were trusting in the lies that caused their hearts to continue to rebel against the warnings of God. We must all determine, am I going to believe God's Word or the Word of man? Some man who says he's speaking for God. Well, I'll tell you what. I have every reason in the world to believe what God has said. And I really don't have any reason to believe, no matter how attractive and glorious it may sound, I have no reason to believe what man may say that contradicts what God has said. I'll go with God's Word. Now, let me take this one step further. God has said that if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Now, Satan so often comes along and says, Aw, oh, how do you know you're saved? You can't be saved. Look at this. Look at that. And he begins to point out uh, the flaws that you have. Now, I'm not surprised that he can find flaws in me. I know of many flaws. Some he hasn't even pointed out yet. But he's always pointing the finger of guilt saying, well, how could God forgive or how could God love I don't know how, but I know He does because He said He does. I know He has forgiven me because He has said He has forgiven me. And so I have to either believe God's Word or I have to believe Satan's doubt. And Satan will come and lie to you about the work of God in your life, the will and the purposes of God for your life. God said, I know my thoughts toward you that they are good. And, and we're going to get that next week in Jeremiah. There. That's a great scripture. I love it. They're good, God said. Not evil. I intend to accomplish my purposes in you. And Satan says, you better watch out, boy. You submit yourself to God. There's something awful is going to happen. You know, it's just terrible, terrible what happens you know, with people. You just never know. Who are you going to believe? Let God be true and every man a liar. You can put your trust in the Word of God. You can put your confidence in the Word of God. He will never, never lead you astray. Father, we thank You for Your Word that You have established it forever. And with Thee, it is yes, amen. There's neither shadow and their variableness of turning with thee, Lord, you are faithful. So faithful. And Lord, help us to question the word of man and always to put our confidence and trust in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we stand. God's Word said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord.
think you're going to get by with your sin is to trust in a lie. You're being deceived. But if you confess your sin, He's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And so today, you can go out and say, well, I don't know if to believe that guy or not. Well, that's fine. Don't ask you to believe me. I ask you to believe God's Word. Just take His Word for it. And anything that I say that is contradictory or, or away from this, then please don't believe it because... You're in bad shape if you do. I'm here to proclaim to you what God has said. God loves you. God has provided a way by which you can be forgiven your sin. And that way is through His Son, Jesus Christ. And there is salvation in no other. There's only one way that God has ordained whereby you can be forgiven and spend eternity with Him. And I would encourage you to receive God's provision through Christ that He offers to you. God bless you. As we come to the end of the old year and the beginning of the new, may the Lord strengthen you. May the Lord bless you. And may the Lord cause this to be a glorious new year of opportunity of knowing Him, serving Him. In Jesus' name.